Tonight, Troy students learn about a different culture. Plus, learn how one Troy service helped a Troy faculty member. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for September 28, 2012. I'm Deirdre Montgomery. And I'm Bailey Majors. Thank you for joining us this evening. Many students who are about to graduate from college get a lot of advice from friends and family about to handle the real world. Troy University's Career Services played host to a workshop yesterday. Judson Garner has more. Get ready for the real world. Many college students hear that statement and do not understand the meaning behind it because they technically are already in the real world. There are things that are similar as far as being in college in the real world, all about balancing your time and putting your priorities in line. Career Services held a workshop in the Trojan Center Thursday evening. Cole says when comparing college life to the quote real world, an F after college usually stands for not failure, but fired. When you move out on your own and I got ready to buy a house, there's a whole lot of paperwork, a whole lot of things you got to do with retirement, insurance, buying a house if you get, get to do that. Um, there, there's a lot of things you have to keep up with and keep your calendar straight and you really have to be on the ball about things. In, in college you are supposed to, but you can kind of get away with it if you don't, but not in the real world. Cole says although some aspects of being in the workforce to a freshman student might not be very appealing, Career Services is still working on getting involved with students early on in their college careers so they can realize what they need from their university and prepare them for post-college success. I want them to take away, especially if they're underclassmen, that we're here on campus in Eldridge Hall, Career Services, for any year, any student, freshman, up to seniors to come see us. We can help them if they're looking for a major. Major, um, looking for a job, maybe internships, so anything we can do to help them. Judson Garner, Troy, Trojan Vision News. If you are a student who would like to utilize career services, it is located in room 104 of Eldridge Hall. And to make an appointment with a career counselor, you can call 334-670-3217. Troy University has students from all over the world attending the Troy campus. Those international students have a group dedicated to sharing their cultures with others. Bree Sanders has a story. On Thursday night, the International Students Cultural Organization held a meeting to gain new members and discuss upcoming events. Tonight we're going to have a movie night. We're showing a French comedy, a really funny one. And then besides, we're going to have sign, membership sign up. We're going to have some members signing up for our weekend trip, which will be next week. We're going to go to Tuskegee and Horseshoe. Throughout the semester, ISCO participates and travels to other universities to learn about the United States, as well as give their members a better understanding of different cultures. It's a learning experience. Like we have presentations from student, of students from different countries uh, about their countries, and you will learn a lot about different cultures. ISCO is not only for international students, it's for any student who wants to learn and experience the history of different cultures. At first when you tell, talk about ISCO, it's like people think, you know, it's just for internationals, like I have to be from another country to join ISCO, but it's not, it's like different cultures coming together. The vice president of ISCO says that even though there is a lot to learn in this organization, she also wants it to be enjoyable. Bree Sanders, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Anyone interested in taking part in ISCO can attend their weekly meetings every Thursday at 7 in Trojan Center Room 119. Well, Bailey, Sodexo Dining Service goes further than just Troy's campus. That's right, Diatra. They also use their services to help people connect across the world. Here's a look at a way they lent a hand to one of Troy's faculty. Kate Ruwinski's son, Chris Foster, has been deployed in Afghanistan for over six okay. months. When she found out he would not be able to come home for his birthday, she wanted to send him something special. I wanted to just send him something that would tell him we were all thinking about him and maybe cheer him up. And so I thought a birthday cake. After several attempts to find a company online that would ship a cake all the way to Afghanistan, Rowinski remembered a conversation about Sodexo dining services she had had with her son. I had just casually asked him how the food was there, and he had laughed and said it was Sodexo, and we were talking about what a small world it was. Rowinski then contacted catering director Brenda Summers to see if there was a way to reach the Sodexo company in Afghanistan. 
and it turned out that Summers had all the right connections. Went directly to my national catering consultant. I emailed her. Within about 30 minutes, I had an email back uh, stating that she would start the process. It involved a lot of people all over um, France, London, Asia. Brewinski and workers at Sodexo said they were pleased with the efforts of the company and how the cake turned out. The cake was huge. It looked delicious. He told me it was gone in 10 minutes. It's wonderful that we could do that for Chris. Sodexo works as a team here and now I see we work as a team everywhere. Rowinski said not only were she and her son appreciative to Sodexo, but so were the members of her son's unit. All of his um, friends there and, you know, the other officers had all showed up to support him too. And it gave him a little break from that constant stress. He was really touched and I was really touched. Rowinski was able to help her son celebrate his birthday even though they were both on different sides of the world. But she also received a sweet treat as her son made a surprise visit home this week. And now taking a look at news from around the state. In Montgomery, Governor Robert Bentley says it is an essential to the state's efforts to create new jobs that voters approve Amendment 2 on the ballot November 6. Bentley said the amendment will allow the state to refinance bonds for industrial development projects. He said passing the amendment will make about $150 million available for the state to use to recruit new industry. And in Birmingham, operators of some nonprofit clinics that spay and neuter animals say new rules being considered by a state board could cause them to close their doors. The proposed bills would, would prohibit non-veterinarians from hiring veterinarians and would prohibit non-veterinarians from owning vet equipment. And also in Montgomery, the Alabama Supreme Court has asked two lower courts to re-examine their decision upholding the death sentence of Christopher Anthony Floyd for the 1992 robbery and shooting of a worker at an Ashford store. The Supreme Court reversed the decision of the Alabama Court of Criminal Appeals upholding the capital murder conviction and death sentence of the 40-year-old Floyd. Still to come on Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News, the president and his GOP challenger prepared for their first debate. We'll have that story and more after the break. But first in sports, head football coach Larry Blakeney and his team have hit the road for another conference road game. Daniel Percival will be in with the details in sports. Old rivalry takes to the gridiron for the first time tomorrow night. I'm Danielle Percival. I'll have a preview of the South Alabama game coming up in sports. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. In 1887, it was written that we want to educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, the body to act. And it's no different today than it was 125 years ago. Some things never change. The mission of this university is to prepare leaders who are going to go into the communities and make a difference. And I think it's within that culture of caring that excellence is found. Troy University. In class. Online. Within reach. Troy.edu. From the High Definition Digital Production Studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world, we'll go to Deatra Montgomery at the Global News Desk. Deatra. Thanks, Bailey. Well, less than six weeks to go before Election Day, the presidential candidates are still working to raise the campaign cash. Each use a good chunk of the day for fundraising before they hunker down to prepare for the first debate. Daniel Nottingham has the latest from the White House. For the first time in nearly two months, Mitt Romney took his campaign to Pennsylvania. Recent polls give President Obama a comfortable lead in the state, something Romney discussed with campaign donors. You know, we really would shock people if early in the evening of November 6th, it looked like Pennsylvania was going to come our way. Romney is loading up on campaign cash in Pennsylvania and Massachusetts. The next president of the United States, Mitt Romney. But he also spoke to supporters at Valley Forge Military Academy. He slammed the president on taxes. 
and he wants to raise the income tax. I don't want to raise taxes on the American people, not when our economy is in the kind of trouble it's in. I will not raise taxes on middle income Americans. The president stayed close to the White House with three fundraisers. He's expected to pull in almost two and a half million to make his case to voters, but some have already cast their ballots. Most campaign watchers say early voting favors the president because of his grassroots organization and current edge in several polls. We love our president. He's a president for everybody. Early voting started Thursday in Iowa. First Lady Michelle Obama headed to the battleground state to help get out the vote. Thursday in Virginia, another key battleground, the president hit Romney on the economy. We don't need to double down on the same trickle-down policies that got us into this mess in the first place. Both candidates will use the weekend to prepare for next week's debate. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, the White House. Newly released court documents are raising questions why University of Colorado police did not report James Holmes to outside authorities. The suspect remains behind bars facing 152 charges in the shooting that killed 12 people and injured 58 others. Randall Pinkston reports from New York. Court documents confirm shooting suspect James Holmes threatened a Colorado University professor before his rampage. Prosecutors say the university then banned the neuroscience grad student from campus, but defense attorneys say not so. They say Holmes had already begun the process of withdrawing from school, and that's why his campus key card had been deactivated. The newly released court documents are filled with blacked out names and entire pages to protect witnesses and Holmes' right to a fair trial. But they offer a peek into the legal proceedings that have gone on, mostly out of public view, since the mass killing at this Colorado movie theater in July. Holmes is also known to have mailed a notebook to a university psychiatrist describing a violent attack. The defense says the notebook is protected under doctor-patient privilege and does not want it used as evidence. But prosecutors argue there is no privilege because the doctor-patient relationship ended weeks before the attack. Still, they've decided not to push the issue because they feel the defense will have to breach the doctor-patient privilege themselves if they try to prove Holmes is mentally ill. Holmes has not yet offered a plea. Randall Pinkston, CBS News. An FDA advisory panel is weighing approval of an artificial retina that can help blind people regain part of their vision. Vanita Nair reports from New York. Dean Lloyd lost his sight when he was in his 30s. He suffers from a rare disease that damages the retina. Lost all ability to form images when I was in 1989. And after that point in time, I had no vision for at least 17 years. That began to change when he enrolled in a clinical trial and doctors implanted an artificial retina. The device uses a tiny video camera in the patient's glasses that converts images to electrical impulses. A transmitter in the glasses sends those impulses to electrodes implanted on the back of the damaged eye. The electrodes then stimulate visual centers in the brain. Lloyd, who once saw nothing, can now see some shapes and can tell the difference between black, white, and gray. The device is meant to use in patients that have lost all of their vision, don't have any vision at all, and um, trying to restore some of that vision back. The artificial retina received approval in Europe last year. The company that makes the device estimates that 10,000 people could benefit from this technology. Lloyd has had the system for five years and is always trying to find new ways to use it. In the last week or two, I actually left my cane at home and used it by itself to get to the office about two and a half to three blocks. But it takes training, it takes a lot of thought process to make it work. He hopes the technology becomes more widely available so it can be improved and help more people. Vanita Nair for CBS News, New York. And that wraps things up from the Global News Desk. To see more stories from across the country and around the world, such as what makes one 12-year-old boy's first kiss so special, you can tune in to Trojan Vision Global News right after night, nightly news. Now back to you, Bailey. Thank you, Deatra. Now Danielle Percival joins us for a look at sports. So, Danielle, earlier the Trojan football team hit the road for the game to Mobile, but we actually have a couple of other Trojan athletics that are in action over the weekend. That's right, Bailey. Of course, football is the big story, as always. But not to forget, we do have other teams in action, including some home action, so Trojan fans can come out and support the volleyball team over the weekend. But mm -hmm. let's get into the football preview. All right. Football games are usually exciting, but the excitement level for this weekend's matchup is unprecedented. Really, 
they've never met before. But the excitement isn't just over a first time meeting. It's bringing an old rivalry to the gridiron. Though Troy and South Alabama will be playing their first football game this weekend, the history between the schools goes back much further. This has been a rivalry for Troy and South Alabama for a long time. So, you know, there's some, there's some energy that's going on between these two universities already. The Trojans and Jaguars have met in many different sports, both men's and women's, but the rivalry between the football teams brings a different level of excitement. If you're red-blooded American, you don't matter where you're a South Alabama or a Troy football player, you ought to be excited about this weekend. We've all been pretty excited about seeing these guys this year. We've been thinking about it, talking about it for a couple of years now, you know, listening to them talk about it. So, you know, we're pretty excited about it, man. And they're a good football team, so we're going to have to come to play, man. They, you know, they showed they can hang with the big dogs. With no series history to look at, what do you compare? In the past two weeks, Troy and South Alabama have both played Mississippi State and both suffered losses. In those games, the Jags' defense allowed fewer yards, although the Trojans' offense put up over 200 more yards than USA was able to. Stats only mean so much, especially when it's a rivalry game. And this isn't just a conference rivalry, it also has to do with sharing the same state lines. Many, any in-state Alabama game we play, we definitely key in that game and definitely it's a must win for us. You know, it's also recruiting, you know, bragging rights as you said, so it's definitely going to be a big game for us. This is the first Sunbelt game for South Alabama, so there's no doubt the Jags will be ready to hit somebody. Blakeney says the Trojans have to be just as prepared. I'm sure they're excited about playing us. and. We got to make sure we, we match their energy and play well. I know they're going to be fired up because it's their, their first, you know, conference game at home. So we just had to go out there and, you know, put our best foot forward and just go hard. Well, now we know how the Trojans are preparing for the game, but what's the opposition got to say? Well, Troy is the standard for the Sun Belt. I mean, that's what I tried to say earlier. No, no doubt in my mind, they're, they're the standard. I mean, if you get to their level, you're up there. And uh, so we understand fully what they've done, and, and uh, we're excited about playing them. Kids are excited. And I think it's going to be a great atmosphere here in Mobile. Um, and, I mean, this will be the biggest game in Ladd Stadium that we've played. Well, history will be made when the Jaguars play their first Sun Belt Conference game against the Trojans Saturday at 2.30. Again, the game will be in Mobile at Ladd People Stadium. And for the Trojans soccer team, they'll be hitting the road as well, though it will be a light weekend of competition for them with only one game on the schedule. The Trojans will play their first conference road game of the year in Denton, Texas, taking on the Mean Green. Troy began conference play last weekend but was unable to come away with any victories. They faced the Florida teams of the Sun Belt, while North Texas faced the Louisiana teams and swept their matches. North Texas is 7-3-1 on the year, while the Trojans are 5-6-1 and, and on a four-game losing streak. But the Trojans do have the chance to turn things around Sunday at 1 in Denton, Texas. The only team in action on campus this weekend is the volleyball team. They'll be playing both Florida teams of the Sun Belt. Troy opened conference play with a 1-1 one one weekend. Their opponent tonight, Florida International, did the same. But FAU, the Trojans' Saturday foe, was 0-2 in the opening weekend. Here's head coach Sonny Kirkpatrick with the keys for Trojan success this weekend. It all comes down to us taking care of the ball on our side. If we pass well and keep our offense in system and flowing, uh, they're really difficult to stop. And uh, hopefully we can do that a little bit. And being at home with the crowd and everything, you know, hopefully it's our advantage. The Trojans and the Golden Panthers will be in action at Sartain Hall at 7 o'clock tonight. But if you aren't able to make it out tonight, there's another opportunity this weekend. Troy will play host to Florida Atlantic Saturday at 5, and admission to all home volleyball games is free. So, Deontra Bailey, we've been talking about the football game all week. It's going to be a very exciting game, very exciting to see that in-state rivalry, to see what that can become. And, of mm -hmm. course, we wish the best of luck to all the teams in action this weekend. Absolutely. And like you said, if you have time, come out and support volleyball. If not, just cheer on the Trojans all weekend. That's right. Always good to see the fans out there in the stands. Absolutely. Thanks, Anne. Thank Thanks. you. Coming up on Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News, we'll learn how students can meet with possible future employers. But first, we've seen pleasant weather all week, but will it stick around for the weekend, Jamarlo? Well, we may see some change in weather this weekend, but I'll have that and more coming up next in weather. Come on, let's go. Hey. Hey, hi, what's your name? You live around here? You're pretty. Where are you guys going? Where are you 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 going? Where are
Yeah. Guess it's about time to get you fixed, sweetie. Your pets will start getting noticed sooner than you think. Accidental litters lead to millions killed in shelters each year. Help prevent more. Fix at month four. Check out this chef, right? That's so gay. Please don't say that. It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Some risks are obviously not worth taking. Some aren't as obvious, but could be just as deadly. Like the risk for type 2 diabetes. Take the diabetes risk test and stop diabetes before it stops you. From the high-definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now Jamarla Phillips joins us for a look at weather. So, Jamarlo, from the beginning of the week till now, we've mm -hmm. been seeing some really great weather, warm temperatures, you know, uh, light breeze here and there. What can we expect for the rest of the weekend? Well, that may change. For the weekend, we may be experiencing some rain, but I'll get into more of that right now. But first, let's take a look at our campus snapshot. Taking a look at Bib over Bib Gray's quad right now, it's beautiful skies, uh, very clear skies as well. Um, just a great day to get outside and just enjoy the nice weather while we have it. Going into our current conditions, we can see that skies are right now are fair. Temperature coming in at 87 degrees, dew point 65, humidity at 49%, barometer reading 30 inches and falling with our winds coming from the northeast at about one mile per hour. Going into today's stats, we're able to see a high today of 88 degrees, a low of 67. Unfortunately, no rain today, but that may change in the next 48 hours. Sun rose this morning at 6.34 a.m. and it's supposed to set this afternoon around 6.32 p.m. Going into our temperatures from around the state, we can see that we are experiencing the mid to high 80 degree temperatures across Alabama right now. Mobile sitting at 85 degrees, Birmingham sitting at 90, Birmingham, um, Montgomery 89 with clear skies, Troy in our area, we're at partly cloudy skies with 88 degrees, uh, Phoenix City 80, 86 degrees, Dothan 87, and um, Huntsville at the top. Huntsville with a cool temperature of 71 degrees with, with, uh, with chances of rain. Going into our current temperatures across the southeast, we can see that temperatures really doesn't change right, really don't change right here. Um, 87 degrees in Birmingham, 90 in Albany. Um, taking a look at towards the west in the Texas area, they are experiencing a uh, mid degree 80 mid degree 80 temperatures as well. Going into our current temperatures across the United States, we can see that uh, temperatures north of Alabama experiencing 70 degrees, 70, around the mid 70 degree temperatures. Um, again, taking a look at the west, we can see they are experiencing um, 75, 75, 71, 69, very cool temperatures in those areas west of Texas. Going into our current surface map across the United States, we can see that we have a few high pressure systems. Um, Few high pressure systems, a low pressure system sitting right here in the north of Texas with a stationary front as well. Going into our closer look in our area, we can see that we have a few scattered, few scattered showers, not few scattered showers in Alabama right now, as well as um, in the Texas area as well, in which in which we in which we may be seeing um, parts parts of this um, parts of this right here in the next the next two days or so. Going to our precipitation forecast for the next 48 hours, we will be seeing maybe under an inch of rain. Going into our thunderstorm forecast for tonight, we may be experiencing thunderstorms tonight, but nothing too severe. Going into, going into Saturday's forecast, we'll be seeing um, under an inch of rain. That rain will remain in our area maybe for the next few days. Going into Sunday, that rain will, like I said before, will remain in our area. We'll be seeing a heavier heavier chance of rain um, on Sunday. Going into Monday, that rain will remain in our area as well. We'll be seeing maybe up to an inch or maybe even three inches of rain on Monday. Going into Tuesday, that rain will try to push out of our area um, to the, going towards the east. And on for tonight's forecast, partly cloudy skies, straight thunderstorms possible with a 20% chance of rain. Winds coming from the southwest about two, about two miles per hour, low of 67 degrees. Going into tomorrow's forecast, we'll be seeing mostly cloudy skies, isolated thunderstorms. Winds coming from the west about four miles per hour with a high of 87 degrees. Going into our four-day forecast. Looking at Saturday, we'll be seeing partly cloudy skies. Sunday, we'll be seeing chances of thunderstorms as well as Monday and Tuesday. So, Diatra Bailey, um, seems as if we're going to have a... Um, very nice weekend. Um, we may be seeing rain, but for next week, we'll definitely be seeing uh, those chances of thunderstorms. Okay, thank you so much, Shamar. All right, thank you.